What's up guys? It's your girl Abby Ishola from Culture Shock Nigerians in America. I'm standing across the street from the offices of Europa TV. I'm about to go interview Jason Njoku, the CEO. So come on, follow me inside and see what he has to say. My name is Jason Njoku. I'm the CEO of Europa Partners. Um, we distribute Nigerian movies and music online. I grew up in South East London, um, the UK, um, solidly working class background, um, didn't really go to Nigeria as much as like my peers, um, so maybe every five years, so there was always that relationship but it wasn't sort of part of the Nigerian community as such. Um, 2002 went into university, uh, spent three years to got a degree in chemistry and thereafter I just started with the idea that I want to sort of do some business things going back to my Igbo roots um, and I've pretty much been doing it ever since really. Forbes recently just highlighted you as one of the 10 young African millionaires and you're smiling. <laughs> I was going to say how does that feel but I see how it feels. Um, to be honest with you, I, like, um, as strange as it sounds, like I'm not really one to call the media. Um, you'll never sort of see me out at events, I'm not sort of out on the town, I rarely go out, I'm just sort of a geek who sits in the room. Um, I think the Forbes thing was quite interesting because um, I, like, it's not just me, there's obviously a lot of people with me. Um, I think wealth creation is a great thing, but just for the sake of wealth creation is not a great thing. I think as long as we keep on making people smile by Roku TV, whatever valuation they put to us, that's fine. But, um, you know, I chuckled for a little bit. I had a laugh with my fiance. I've had like a thousand Facebook fans, mainly from girls. Um, so it, it, it's, it, 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 it massages the ego, but it basically it doesn't pay the bills, right? So I'm going to get back to work and focus on what's important. Cool. So you have a fiance. I do. So ladies, he's off the market. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about the changes with the Roku TV. Are you now based in New York or are you still in Lagos? So the heart of the company will always be Lagos. Um, we have, I think, around 100 employees at the moment. 80 of them are in Lagos. Um, we have like 12 or 13 in London. And New York is like the newest office we've got open. It's been open two months. We have seven people um, at the moment. What were you doing before you started Iroko TV? Before Iroko TV, um, I was failing miserably at trying to start media businesses. So I, I worked as hard as I work now, but just with little, little to no success. So after graduating from university in 2005, um, I started my first media business. Um, it was a, uh, a magazine aimed at the student population of the north of England. So that's Manchester, Leeds, sort of uh, Sheffield. Um, very, very, very popular. Made no money whatsoever. Um, a complete and utter failure. Um, but at the same time, the um, the ability to kind of obviously condense an idea, distill it into something which is tangible, put something out there, hard work, just that sort of like, you know, the hard knocks of sort of making, trying to make money in the real world, um, pretty much gave me like a grounded education on how to do these things. Um, thereafter, I set up like another business which was online. Again, it was uh, popular, but just never really figured out how to make money from it. So for five and a half years before I woke up, I spent a big chunk of my time trying to figure out in media how to make money um, with some sort of popularity. How did the idea for Iroko TV come about? So I think it's really simple. Um, it's rare in the history of humanity that you find something which is so popular which hasn't benefited from some sort of uh, marketing machine to make it popular. So everyone knows Coca-Cola but they know it because everyone spends huge amounts of money, well Coca-Cola spends huge amounts of money marketing it, right? Hollywood is massively popular but if a budget of a movie is 100 million, they're spending 100 million as well on marketing. But then there's this thing called um, Nollywood, which it hasn't benefited from any marketing or this organized systematic marketing machine ever, but it's just like wildly popular. And it's not just like a local, like Nigerian phenomenon, massive in the Caribbean, massive like everywhere in the world. And you know, Nigerians being, like, I think, one in five black person on the planet is Nigerian, and we're everywhere in the diaspora. Yes, we are. <laughs> um, what a grand thing. So, um, you know, you have this mega trend which is, you know, Nigeria is kind of cool, it's popular, it's happening for the music and entertainment world. Um, and when I looked at like the market, and I looked at it from just like a media guy's perspective, it just didn't make any sense that you have something which is hugely popular, you have people who are, you know, really, you know, high volume, high velocity filmmaking, um, there just seems to be this weird dislocation between the value being created people consuming it and how they're consuming it and 
just the monetization sort of infrastructure behind that. So I think Aroko TV just had to exist. Whether it was me or someone else, it just had to exist for Nollywood to survive.